so it it's been challenging for me personally um, and especially with having seen some of these movements um, I wanted to really sit with and meditate on you know how do you bring skillful language to the table when things like this are happening and it's bringing up some hard emotion for you and I think what's really important is that we start with forgiveness. We start with compassion. And we come in centered, centered in love. Many people will get activated by activists because they are angry and they come in with rage and they want to tear down, you know, the system. They want to you know, basically destroy what we have. And I think it's important to be aware of when we feel this way and to also try to understand when people are in this state, because we've all been there. We've all been in a rage. We've all been angry. We've all been feeling like we haven't been fully heard or understood. And I think it's so important to bring awareness in a way that is inclusive and awareness that really unites people. But you might not always have that effect. So what happens when you're showing up and um, it, it feels like you're on opposing sides? You know, you're trying to get the other person to see what you've experienced and the other person just won't have it. You know, their reality is their reality and that's the way they see their reality. And that's also part of the reason why I even felt um, hesitant to speak about the Black Lives Matter event, the local event. It was, it was like a lot of people have their reality of that event. And I wasn't there to try to negate that reality. I saw that it was done with positive intention. Um, but I think it's so important um, in times of racial and social injustice that we really open up the platform to people who have felt oppressed in our country, that we make them and we put them first and that we take time to apologize and we take time to really listen so that Black people feel heard and honored, Hawaiian people feel heard and honored on their own land that that space is being taken up by them. And I wanna talk about some levels of healing that can happen once we start to really self-reflect on, you know, first we have an awareness within ourself that we have anger or rage or something isn't right. And so we work on processing our own emotion. And that's one level of healing. I think that's so important that comes through self-love and then the second level is being able to go to your peers and tell your peers. And so in this case, what I am seeing right now, which is wonderful, are conversations that are being brought to the table. But I'm still seeing, you know, Black people feel more comfortable speaking with other Black people to receive, you know, being seen and being heard and, and really letting, you know, all their emotions come to the surface and really, you know, good or bad, really be seen and heard. So, um, and I think that's wonderful that that conversation is happening. But the question right now is, what is it really going to take to create systematic change? What is it really going to take? So the second level is when you feel like you can speak to your peers. So let's say you're a female and you feel more comfortable talking to women about your problems or your traumas that you've had with men. So that would be the second level, or maybe you're being professionally supported by someone so that you can engage in that healing process. And I, I would say that's the second level, the peer support. And then the next level is when you are able to speak and converse with the person that you perceive as the oppressor or the perpetrator. So the person who represents, you know, archetypally, you know, in this case, it would be the white person, perhaps a white man 
with a black man and a white man really taking that space to hear and see and acknowledge everything that a black man has experienced in this country. And that is the third level of healing that we can start to experience. So if you want to take this into your personal life, this would be somebody who really hurt you. Think of somebody who really wounded you, who betrayed you, who um, caused you a great deal of pain. And now you're able, you know, whether through your imagination or intention or actually having that physical conversation, you're actually able to speak with them. And you're both able to experience empathy with one another and compassion. So that, and when you get to that level, um, that's where you start to see changes happen in your community where you're actually able to have a conversation and just be honest and where, you know, what's being said isn't a personal attack. It's that person sharing their story and their experience. So when we open up the space for everybody's reality to be valid, for everybody's reality to exist, even if we don't agree, for me personally, I do not agree with segregation or any kind of um, subtle laws or anything like that that keeps certain people out of a community. And um, so I have to be mindful at the same time that just because I don't agree with that and I don't necessarily understand it, that I'm still willing to come from a place of um, togetherness a place of love, a place of unity and true healing. Maybe that's not going to always be in a very civil matter. Sometimes there has to be this unrest, but um, I'm going to share some of the tools and practices that you can begin with and a short guided meditation that you can do on your own before you go into any kind of, I would say highly charged or potentially confrontational situation or situation where you really wanna bring healing to your community. And I think that to really bring this kind of healing and medicine into our community, we have to bring black people and white people and all people of color to the table to have a real, honest, authentic conversation. And right now, that safety isn't there. You know, a lot of people aren't feeling the safety to have that kind of conversation where at all your feelings, everything can get heard, where what you're really feeling and um, your emotions can come to the surface and your thoughts. Um, because, you know, we're afraid of that attack, right? We don't want to be attacked. We don't want to be diminished. And what can happen when we get into these situations is that let's say the person that wounded you, the perpetrator, you know, they make your reality wrong and they make your reality really small. They say, oh, that's not, you know, that's not happening. What are you talking about? And they invalidate your reality. They make you wrong and they make you feel bad. And all of a sudden you feel like you're in the wrong for saying what's true for you. So that's why we don't get into the situations because we don't want to rock the boat. We don't, we don't want to cause waves. But as Martin Luther King said, sometimes we go for that false peace. You know, it's not just the absence. Um, you still have the tension that's there, but it's sort of a false peace. You know, you're just trying to keep the peace instead of really digging in and going to the root or the source of what's, what's happening, what that dynamic is. So think of it this way, like when we don't, um, know how to go into a situation because we're afraid on a very unconscious level um, that we're going to get attacked, that we're going to get judged, that we're going to be made small or made wrong. And, you know, all of a sudden now you feel bad about yourself for no reason other than just saying the truth of your experience. Um, but this attack goes back and forth. So it goes back and forth horizontally. So whether this is with your partner with a family member, with an oppressor, a person of color, or a white person, whatever, whoever this person is, 
um, you know, this is, this is sort of the, the back and forth that can happen. And so I think it's important to have that awareness that you can go into the situation and the other person's reality is so strong and they have no room for your truth and your reality and, and you're putting a lot of energy into making your reality seen and heard, but it's not being received. So there's a skill um, and where you're now trying to take, let's say some small issue, like maybe the issue that I would like to bring up at the, the recent local event, you know, where you're bringing something up that, that people don't wanna see or necessarily want to acknowledge but you're, you're bringing it up and kind of holding a light for that. And, and you're giving yourself permission to have space with, um, hey guys, look at this. Hey guys, look at some of these laws that have been written into our homeowners association, <laughs> you know, to, to keep local people out of this community. You know, look, look at this language. Let's look at that. So. It's, it's that ability to take something that you see that doesn't resonate with you, that isn't right within you, or that isn't aligned for you, and it's the ability to bring it up and out without feeling afraid of being intimidated, attacked, or bullied, without feeling like you're the outsider and it's so important, you know, in having these kind of conversations, what's really important is safety and trust. Safety and trust, and that starts within you. So that's why it's important to stay centered and to be aware of these dynamics and the unconscious fears within ourselves before we enter these types of conversations or conflicts so that we can stay clear, you know, and that we can stay whole within ourselves, you know, because when people throw attacks or verbal attacks or physical attacks, it, it does create a trauma to our being, you know, it does take time to heal from any attack, you know, however subtle that is. 